Today we're going to show you how to make beautiful watercolor works of art using three things. Coffee filters, markers, and water. I think it's beautiful. What do you think? <laughs> That's so neat! We have beautiful works of art. Let's go. For the coffee filter flowers, coffee filters, washable markers, plates or placemats, water, spray bottle, pipe cleaners. To create your coffee filter flower, you're going to need a coffee filter, of course. You're going to want to flatten it out and make sure there's something underneath your filter because you might have some color bleed. So you can have a placemat or a plate, anything to catch those little water droplets. All right, so the first thing you need is a coffee filter. So you can grab one beside you or one of these. I know how much you like planning. So you can come up with a plan of what colors you want on your flowers. Coming up with a plan is very important in life. We know this as adults. So you can ask your kid, what do you plan to do with your colors? It lets them think ahead and come up with if they want squiggles or if they want lots of colors on their coffee filter or on their page. They can come up with whatever plan they want and these are skills that they will learn for life. Yep, go ahead and stretch it out there and use whatever colors you want. You can make rainbow colors, you can come up with, I know you love purple, do different shades of purple, whatever you want your flowers to look like. Yep, you can use either side. Doesn't matter how big it is. No, you can, and that's the fun part. We can experiment and see like what happens if we make small places of color or big places of color, or if you put some space between them and we can just find out what's gonna happen. Then you're gonna let your child create it however they wish. They can do patterns. You can talk about the way that colors mix together. Whichever you want to do, let your kid create and have freedom to color the way that they love to color. I'm doing a rainbow. You're doing a rainbow one? I am not surprised at that. I feel like if they're closer, they're going to mix together. Oh, okay. They and might spread apart. That's They might spread apart. That is a good hypothesis. Do you know what a hypothesis is? Uh-huh, an educated guess, you're right. This activity is so simple, yet it creates space for you to ask your child some thought-provoking questions. I wonder what would happen if I made some that had like squiggly lines. I'm gonna do some squiggly lines. Can I do some? Sure. What's gonna happen if I put yellow and blue near each other? It's gonna be green. Yeah. Rachel, show me your coffee filter. Show me what you did. Look, it's rainbow. It's beautiful. I love it. What do you think of mine? Cool. Then, after you're done coloring, you're going to take a water bottle and you're going to spray the water on there. And this is where you can watch the magic happen. Once your coffee filter dries, you're going to have a beautiful coffee filter that's colored something like this. We are going to spray it. How much do we spray? We can just test it and see what you think of how can much you need. It? Go ahead. Wait. Rachel, what's happening now that you've sprayed it? What's happening to your colors? Whoa, the colors are changing. The orange is mixing with the yellow. That is beautiful. Now we let it dry. Yep, we're gonna let it dry. See what happens since there's a little bit of space between the colors. See if they start mixing together. Whoa! Nice! It pretty much made. After it's dry, you're going to take your coffee filter and pinch it together. You can create big flowers, small flowers if you make them a little bit tighter. Then take a pipe cleaner and you're simply going to wrap it around and you have a beautiful coffee filter flower. So you take your filter and you're going to pinch it kind of in the middle like this. Just like this. Pinch it in the middle. And see, as you pinch it, it kind of crinkles and makes a flower. And then you're gonna take a it pipe is? cleaner. Yes, that's a beautiful flower. So then take your pipe cleaner and watch mama real quick. I'm just gonna wrap one side around and maybe wrap it around one or two times if you feel like it needs more stability. There you go. Make sure the end gets wrapped around. Good. There. Beautiful. So these are the flowers? Yes. They're beautiful. It's a aren't... big flower. It is a big flower. May I smell yours? <laughs> and we can add them to our vase. Here, add your flower. 
Ooh. Beautiful, Rachel. <gasps> Look how beautiful yours is. I like how we can make different sizes of flowers. How some of them are big and some of them are small if you pinch it even tighter. Rachel, look at our beautiful bouquet of flowers. What do you think? They're so different from each other. I like how different they are. And we can also give them as gifts to people. Cool. I think this will brighten. To Nana. To Nana. Do you think this will brighten anyone's day? Mm -hmm. I think so too. I think Rachel and I really loved this activity because it was so colorful. As we created our flowers, we got to talk about what flowers were our favorites and also just have mom and daughter time, which is so important. Good job, baby. We hope you and your family enjoyed making beautiful watercolor works of art. Let us know how it went for you and your kids by commenting below. And if you post pictures, make sure you tag us. Thanks for watching. Is anybody home? Yes, come visit us. Hi, I would love to come visit you. What a lovely house you have. Hi, I'm Sarah, and these are my kids, Rachel and Benjamin. Have you ever noticed that kids love to play with cardboard boxes? Well, it turns out that cardboard boxes are not only fun, they're also great for developing brains. I'll show you how. Boxes are great for growing minds and muscles. Just set the box out and let your kids go to town. Their imaginations will take them away. Are we at a restaurant? Yes, we are at a restaurant. Yes, yeah, so you can take mommy's order. Mommy, what do you want to eat? Mommy, I would like to mommy. eat a hamburger no, and some come fries, come please. Come. Boxes offer more than fun. For one, they're comforting. The space inside makes kids feel safe, kind of like how babies like to be wrapped up. Plus, Box play teaches kids spatial awareness, which is the understanding of your body in space. Spatial awareness is so important for all movement, but also for social skills. Cardboard boxes give kids a lot of power. It's like a whole room that they can do whatever they want with. When kids imagine a box into different things or move it from one place to another, they develop independence. They feel powerful and learn that they can do things and solve problems by themselves. Good job! Can you give me five? Give me five, you did it! <laughs> a box is basic. No batteries, no sound effects. 100% of the play comes from the kid's imagination. That means that cardboard boxes are imagination superchargers. Beep, beep, beep. Good driving. Woo. Almost there. You'll be amazed at what kids see in a simple cardboard box. It can be a spaceship, a house, a cave, a bus, or even a drive through restaurant. It's a great art opportunity too. Kids love to color and transform boxes. So save those boxes. A cardboard box is many toys in one, and it's a great boost for growing minds and bodies. Help us and other Mother Goose Club families by sharing how your kids play with boxes. Just hashtag pictures and videos with Mother Goose Club and type your play tips into the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe to be the first to hear about new videos. Thanks for watching and happy playing. Bye bye. Say bye bye. Bye bye. Cardboard <laughs> box. Cardboard. And let your kids. <laughs> Boxes, they develop. <laughs> Let me tell you about cardboard boxes. <laughs> it can be a spaceship. I need water, y'all. And other Mother Goose Club. Or comment or type your play tips. Type your play tips. Or type your comment. <laughs> or type your play tips in the comments section. Oh. <laughs> It's a great art opportunity too. Imagination. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
and this is the parents' happy dance for no batteries and no sound effects. <laughs> Today we're creating hungry shape monsters. You simply need construction paper, scissors, glue, and a little creativity. This is a great early math activity for your kids. All right guys, mom has the table set up. Come on in here, I'll show you what we're doing today. Whoa! We are going to wow. make shape monsters. Wow. Wow. So I've already cut out some shapes. You can choose a shape that I've cut out or cut out your own. And you can add things like the eyes and the nose and the mouth and create your own shape monster. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, here we go. To create your shape monster, have your child choose what shapes they want to use. Now, if you have a little one that might have a hard time using the scissors to cut out shapes, you could cut them out for them and have them sitting out already for them on the table. But if you have an older child that may have a lot of fun choosing what shapes they want to use, they can cut them out themselves. Once they choose their shapes, they can create their own shape monster. And you might end up with something like this. All right, so there's triangles. Triangle. All right, there's circles. Triangle. Oh, for the nose. And what are you gonna make, Rach? What shape are you using? I need a black piece of paper. Oh, here's some. 
I'm going to use two white pieces. That's eyes. And I'm good. All right, what do we use? What can I use for the mouth? I know what I can do. What do you want? You need me to read some for you? No. You got it? A one of these. Oh, Silas, I like that. Look what I did. Is it like a big mouth frog? I got two eyes. Silas had so much fun as he got to choose what shape he put on his shape monster. He was running around the table. He even got to use scissors, which is a really big deal for a four-year-old. I need to cut this. Can I cut it? Yes, you may. This way. You're doing great. Oh yeah, that looks happy. Or you can use yeah, and this looks sad. Yeah, black. That does look kind of sad, doesn't it? And then you can make white. Well, you want it sad or happy? Happy. I'm trying not to look. It's so tempting. Can I look? Can I not know? Not yet. Oh, so he has oh, his mouth. <gasps> wow! Look at all those circles you added. I like it. This is not a big one. Can I? Now. Building a shape monster gave my kids independence as they chose what shapes they used. Also, as I asked them questions, I think it gave them confidence because they knew how to answer those questions. So Rachel, you chose a pentagon. Tell me how many sides does a pentagon have? Five sides. Good job, five sides. And if there wasn't something they knew, I could just help them through it. I don't know, I want smaller teeth. Oh. I still don't want. You could cut them smaller. Look, use that triangle and you can go ahead and cut, yeah. Oh. There you go. Open. Benjamin, what are you working on over there? Are you working on eyeballs? No, the mouth. The I'm mouth? I'm only doing one eye. Oh. <gasps> a one-eyed monster. Wait. Look, brother did a one-eyed monster. They got to learn about shapes, but also get to use their hands building it. So it really connected the mind with the body as they learned. Well, let's feet. add some feet. <gasps> what do you think? A feet for this. Now, what shape is this? A what tangle? A rectangle. Right oh, we need to cut two and put the white. Right now, let's see. What else could we add to your heart? I need hands! Some hands! What are you going to use for his hands? What shape? And more rectangles. More rectangles. Awesome. What? Woo! You lost your shape. It was really sweet to see Benjamin give his shape monster to Silas. That really melted my mama heart. Let me see. He's giving it's you a his shape monster. It's a 100 number block monster. Oh, Benjamin, that's wonderful. Your favorite number, 100. <laughs> My husband has one eye! What do you, yes, what do you say to brother? <laughs> Look at my kitty monster. I love it, Rachel. Next, we're doing a really fun game I like to call Feed the Hungry Shape Monster. The kids get to have a scavenger hunt where they find the shapes and then they get to put the shape that corresponds into the hungry monster's mouth. And now, do you see something in this room that's different that has never been here before? Those? Yes. They're neat, aren't and they? Those. And those, yes. Well, these guys over here, you know how we made monsters earlier? Well, these monsters are hungry monsters. And you see their shapes? Yes. Okay, what shapes do you see? Mm -hmm. Um, rectangle, circle, square, and triangle. Okay, well, Mama has hidden shapes all around this room. You're gonna find the shapes and after we find them, we're going to feed we're them. We're going to put them in the bowl. We're going to feed the hungry monsters. Whoa. Whoa. We're gonna put them in. On the count of three. One, two, three, go. Go find them. Chop, chop, chop. Feed them, feed them, guys. We're going to feed them at the very end right now. There's more shapes. Oh, careful, bitch. There you go. Yay. Yay. Go feed him. I found Rachel one. found one. went really, really well. My kids got to learn and have fun. They also got to have a great scavenger hunt and find the shapes. And who doesn't want to feed a hungry shape monster? It was a really fun activity for me and for the kids. Olivia, that is perfect. Oh, I love your son. 
la 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 la. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rachel. You may know me as Teddy from the Mother Goose Club, but I'm also a mom to two children, Olivia and Riley. Did you know that this little ball of dough has superpowers? It's true. When your kids play with it, they build finger muscles and brain power. I'll show you how. <laughs> when little children knead, roll, poke, and cut Play-Doh, they're strengthening the tiny muscles in their hands which they'll need for writing. They're also releasing tension and developing hand-eye coordination. There you go. Whoa, yes! What are you doing? What are you doing? Cooking. You're cooking! I love it! Perfect, Riley. What are you making? Looks like a pizza or peanut butter cookies. Cutting. You're cutting it? I like that. When kids play with Play-Doh, there are no rules. So they can let their imaginations run wild and push the limits of their creativity. This type of activity forces kids to make a lot of decisions and figure things out on their own, which boosts their intelligence. Talking to your kids while they create is also a great way to build their vocabularies. Riley, look, if you turn it around, it'll cut better for you. You see that? That's called a serrated edge, and it'll cut much better for you. See? <gasps> Yay, high five! I like it. Do you like it better when the moon is a crescent moon or the full moon? A uh, crescent moon. Yes, that's Olivia's favorite kind of moon. Okay. Mommy, mommy. Perfect, mommy, Olivia. Mommy, mommy, mommy. I love it. It's perfect. When you turn it this way, what letter is it? C. That's right, it's also a letter C. And you can also call it an arc, Olivia. Pound. Pound? Pound. What are you doing? I said. He said pound. What are you doing? Look. That's a, um, <gasps> it's a waffle. It's a waffle. Waffle! I told you this little ball of dough had superpowers. So add some Play-Doh to your playtime and show us how it goes. When you share your tips with us, you help us and other Mother Goose Club families learn. So please hashtag your videos and pictures with Mother Goose Club and let us know what works for you in the comments below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to be the first to know about our new videos. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Hi, I'm Rachel. You may know me as build brain development. And I said that line wrong. Mommy, look, he's gonna miss the colors. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> oh, whoops. <laughs> Poke and cut Play-Doh? <laughs> what did I say? So let their imaginations run <laughs> Talking to ki your children as they create. <laughs> No, I'm not because I don't know where we're picking up. Can you sit down, Briley? So let them. When your kids play with it, they develop. When your kids play with it, they build. So add some Play Doh to your Play Doh time. <laughs> Hi everyone, today we're going to show you two beautiful rainbow activities. These are really simple to do, super fun, and great for learning. Rainbow. Rainbows. Rainbows. I love rainbows. Let's go. For the cotton ball art, rainbow colored paint, cotton balls, clothes pins, canvas or card, white card stock, glue gun, and glue. Come on in girls. Hey, are y'all ready to do some fun crafts? Uh -huh. This is going to be so much fun. It is. It's going to be so much fun. Let it play for me. A yellow play for me. Let play for you. Yes. Green play for Mary. And blue play for McClay. Yay. Rainbow. Rainbows. I love rainbows. I love rainbows. First, let's start with the basic how-to. For this activity, we're going to make a rainbow with a DIY paintbrush. 
you'll need a piece of plain paper or cardstock. And then to get started, we'll make your paintbrush hack. Kids love hacks like the rest of us. First, you'll need a clothespin and a cotton ball and simply clip them to each other. And voila, a paintbrush. We're gonna take this clothespin and we're gonna make our own paintbrush by grabbing a cotton ball. We're gonna clip it on and make our own paintbrush. Can you do that? You'll wanna take your colors and just dab into the color and put it right on the paper. You can swipe like a paintbrush or just swirl into a circle. Dab your cotton ball in your red. Get a good bit of paint on there. Okay, and now you can start in the corner or you can start at the top. We're gonna make a circle. I have a circle. Good job, good, do a circle. Now do another circle right beside that. Fine motor skills are really great for your kids to learn how to move their fingers and strengthen their muscles and know where to plan to move their hands. This is a great process for all young kids to go through. They'll need to know for tying shoes, typing, and writing. You're kind of making a rainbow rectangle. Yes, You're doing good. I don't know. It's okay. It's okay if they overlap. It's, it's art. It's okay. Try and see if you can take the cotton ball and instead of swiping yeah. it like a brush, see if you can do like this and make it a twist. Right there. Can you twist and make a circle? You may also want to take some cotton balls and just glue them on like clouds. All right, are you ready to put some clouds on? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, I'm gonna help. I'm gonna hot glue the clouds on so they'll stick to our paper, okay? Can you show me? Yeah. Put a little bit of glue on and then pinch right here. Don't touch the glue and then put it on the paper. Where do you want it? Right there? Yeah. Just a little dab of glue under there. Taking a little paint. There you go. Crafts are absolutely amazing learning opportunities. You have something at the end to show for it, but the process is super valuable. What do you imagine is around your rainbow? King. Is there an animal of some kind? McLean, you love horses. Look, look at that! A panda. This activity is bright and colorful no matter what. But if you want an extra educational boost with your kids, talk about what you're making. A paintbrush. What does a paintbrush have? It has a part of a handle. It also has the brush. And you're gonna take common household items to make this, a clothespin and a cotton ball. This is really great for their minds to think about creativity and how to come up with solutions to everyday problems. Are y'all ready for the next activity? Mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. Okay, this time we're gonna make another kind of rainbow. We're gonna make a rainbow in a jar. <gasps> for the rainbow in a jar, Mason jar, cotton balls, mixing cups, water, stirring utensil, placemats, plates, rainbow paint, glitter, washi tape. Now that you've created your rainbow on paper, let's create a rainbow in a jar. We'll fill the cup up halfway, or about four ounces, and add about a tablespoon of paint. Just pour it right in and give it a stir. I'm gonna put some water in here. We're gonna put a little bit of paint and then I'm gonna have you stir it. I'm gonna put a little glop in there. I think we're gonna have to stir it up, don't you? Yeah. In this activity, learning how to work together and do steps in order is really important. Can I have purple in there? Sure. Stir, stir, stir. Once it's mixed, you'll take cotton balls. You'll probably need about 20. Kind of pull them, stretch them apart, and put them in the water. Now, the next step is we're gonna take these cotton balls and I want you to kind of pull them apart just a little bit. Now, everybody put cotton balls, enough cotton balls in each one of your colors to kind of soak up the water. We don't wanna see any white, okay? McLean, you need some more in yours. So we wanna soak up the water, okay? So we're gonna have to put a lot more cotton balls in yours. Okay. Shove them down in there, but just don't spill. It's a lot. It's a marshmallow. <laughs> okay, tell me when you think you're done. Um, I think you need a little more. A little bit more? Yeah. McLean, how about some more in your, um, put maybe three more in both of your colors. Once your cotton balls are saturated with the color, you'll pour it right on top and layer it. You'll end up having all six colors layered in your jar. Spread them out until the jar is full and your colors are layered, and then add a little glitter for some extra sparkle. Pour the purple in. Whoa. Now, let's add a little sparkle. You wanna take some glitter and sprinkle some in? See that? Next color. Red is the first and wings is the last. We had a little trouble getting the cotton balls from the cup to the jar, so we had to troubleshoot and figure out what was the best way to make that happen. Scoop it in there like this. 
my little block. Oh, I'm in. Then our red. Okay. Shake it down in here. Okay. I think we planned that out perfectly, don't you think? Mm-hmm. Good job. Then top it off with your top of your jar. And for some extra color, add some colorful washi tape to decorate the top. This will make it fun for your kids to pick different colors and it'll also help seal the jar. And there you have it, a rainbow in a jar. I got it, I got it. Just get it on. Just it the other way, the other way. Okay. You're opening it, let's close it. So we're gonna decorate the top of our rainbow with some tape. I'm going to find it, no Oh, so pretty. What do you think about our rainbow in a jar? How pretty. Do you love it? Yeah. That's awesome. I just can't barely see the blue because of the green. The green's kind of smushing into the blue. All in all, this activity looks great and is great for hands and minds too. Rainbow, rainbow in a jar. Get ready, set, and let's rainbow it up. Don't forget to share with us what you learned with the Show Me How community and share any tips and tricks below in the comments. Thanks for watching. In this video, we're gonna show you a really easy way to make Play-Doh at home. <laughs> Hi, I'm Carolyn. And these are my friends, Phoebe and Kira. When I was a kid, I spent hours making shapes and creatures and pretend foods out of Play-Doh. I loved the endless possibilities of a lump of fresh, squishy dough. <laughs> what I didn't realize was that those little mounds of dough were helping me develop my hand muscles and sparking my imagination. So now I love watching these guys have that same creative experience and knowing the great benefits they're getting while they play. In this video, we're gonna show you a really easy way to make Play-Doh at home. This is a great project to do with kids because not only will they learn by helping you with the cooking, but they also have fun playing with the finished product. The best place for this project is the kitchen because we'll need to cook our dough on the stove for several minutes. And plus, we might make a little mess. The tools that we'll need are a small saucepan, a wooden spoon, a plate, measuring cups, and measuring spoons. The ingredients that we'll need are flour, water, salt, vegetable oil, cream of tartar, and food coloring. And we'll also need some glitter because we're making our dough sparkly. Phoebe and Kira help me with the measuring, which is a great thing for them to learn. Okay, are you guys ready to add the ingredients? Yeah! Okay, first, one cup of flour. Phoebe? It's hard to come out. There you go. Good job. All right, second, we're gonna add one cup of water, and I'll do that. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, third, a quarter cup of salt. All right, Kira, good job. Now, we'll add one tablespoon of vegetable oil, and I'll do that. It's very tiny. It is very tiny. One tablespoon. Here we go. Then we add two teaspoons of cream of tartar. Do you each want to add one teaspoon? Yeah. Okay. And with your finger, you want to level that off? Yeah, good job. Now right into the pan. Good job. So Kira, do you see what Phoebe did? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then level it off. Good job. Nice, okay. Now it's time to add the food coloring. What color should we make our Play-Doh? Blue. Blue, sounds good. So let's add 10 drops of blue food coloring to the pan. I can add five and Kira can add five since five plus five is 10. Perfect, 
All right, let's count together. One, two, three, four, five. Good job. Okay, now Phoebe, your turn. One, two, three, four, five. Good job, guys. Now, with a wooden spoon, we stir everything together until it's mostly mixed up. Good job. Phoebe, do you wanna try? Yeah. Okay. Good job, Kira. Nice. It sounds bubbly. It does sound bubbly, doesn't it? Now we keep stirring until most of the lumps are gone. It already smells like Play-Doh. It does smell like Play-Doh. Once the mixture looks smooth, we put the pan on the stove over medium heat and continue stirring the mixture while it's heating. To be safe, I do the cooking part, but I make sure to show Phoebe and Kira what's happening in the pan as the mixture starts to change because it's a neat process to watch. After a couple of minutes, you'll start to see solid clumps forming in the pan. Continue to stir these clumps together until they form one giant doughy mass. It happens pretty quickly. Hey guys, come look at this. See, it's starting to look like dough. Once your dough looks like this, turn off the heat and take your pan over to the counter and dump the dough onto a plate. Now the dough is very warm, so I'm gonna let it cool for a few minutes until it's cool enough to handle. Now just knead the warm dough until it feels mixed up. Do you guys wanna try? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, go for it. What does that feel like, Kira? It feels like sticky ice cream. Sticky ice cream, what do you think, Phoebe? I think it feels like melted ice cream. Like melted ice cream, yeah. Does it feel mixed up? Yeah. yeah. All right. And that's it. Let's add the glitter to make it sparkly. You got it. What color should we use? Pink. Pink? I like that idea. All right. So we just make a dent in the middle, like this. And then we add glitter. Like that. And then just knead it until it's spread throughout. See, wasn't that easy? I love being able to make any color we want. Me too. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> what does it feel like? It feels like squishy dough. Squishy dough. I like to go like this. I'm yeah. glad we went with the blue. The blue is a pretty color. It is a pretty color. With pink sparkles. I like to poke it. Poke, 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 poke. I'm gonna stick it. Yeah. I'm gonna try and make a snail. If you store your dough in a plastic baggie or airtight container, it will keep for several months. Help us and other Mother Goose Club families learn by showing us how you and your kids did this project. We love to hear from you. So hashtag pictures and videos with Mother Goose Club and type stories into the comment section below. And also, don't forget to subscribe to be the first to hear about new videos. Bye! Bye. And... Bye! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> no. <laughs> Cute. Hey. Other Mother Goose Club is kind of tongue twister. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jane, and I love crafting with my kids, Alex and Emily, because it helps them learn a lot about themselves and how to get along with others. These are important skills for success in school. I like doing crafts because you can turn trash into pretty things. And I love glitter! 
So in this video, we're going to show you a fun craft that turns empty water bottles and toilet paper tubes into musical shakers. With glitter! <laughs> yes, Alex, plenty of glitter. <laughs> For each shaker, you need an empty and dry water bottle, the short eight ounce kind works best, a toilet paper tube or paper towel tube cut in half, scissors, electrical tape, a funnel, and something to fill the bottle with. We're using beans to make noise and glitter to make it pretty, but you can use whatever you want. Little jingle bells, paper clips, rice, beads, and confetti, anything that'll fit. All right, let's get started. The first step is to fill your bottles a third of the way with beans and glitter, or whatever you're using. I've learned early on that it's best to keep glitter in a contained region. It can get pretty messy. Put that lid on good and tight. We cut the tube next, right? That's right. Do you want to go first? Sure. Emily can do her own cutting, but usually I handle it for Alexandra, especially when it comes to thicker material like cardboard. All done. Now, can you put this over the mouth of the bottle? Step five, tape the tube to the bottle. Make sure to tape the tube very securely to the bottle. I know the next step. What is it? Decorating with tape. That's right. Yeah, and I want to use silver, blue, and white. Oh my goodness, okay, let's do it. Why don't we start with silver first? Okay. Great. How about I will cut the pieces of tape for you, and then you can tape them on the tube. Okay. Emily, are you done with the white tape yet? Can I use it? Sure. One thing I love about crafting is that it's a great way to teach your kids how to take turns and work together. Look, Mom, I made a heart. Oh, wow. Oh, that's so cool. I made one for you too, Alex. Thank you so much. So are you guys all done? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to try them out? Sure. sure. Let's do it. And there you have it. These shakers are pretty to look at and fun to play with. And when your kids use them as instruments, they learn about rhythm and patterns. Try this craft at home and let us know how it goes with a photo or video tagged Mother Goose Club or leave comments below. And don't forget to subscribe for other crafts, tips, activities, and more. Bye! Here we have it. Yeah, Let's do it again. <laughs> From there? Okay. Okay. <laughs>